for 100 GB of the data, we were able to find out, we are able to find out to use the 800 cores and 400 GB of the memory. Right, so 400 GB of the memory. So these configurations are uh, we were able to find to process the 100 GB of the data dedicated cluster. So here the real challenge comes. Okay, so in in the dedicated cluster, obviously. Uh, there is no choice that uh, you know you'll get the input from the user uh, sorry user or interviewer instead you can try to calculate your own cluster this case is usually you can you'll get it in recent times because most of the uh, customers or interviewer are uh, are trying to uh, understand how well about your your understanding in the uh, cloud right so uh, to know about that one so mostly we can go with the dedicated cluster means the dedicated cluster is that cluster is applicable only for your job it will up and running for executing of your job once uh, it executing your job it will shut down so that, that's how the dedicated cluster will work out so in this case of a dedicated cluster you need to understand one point very much clear with this is sla what is the allowed sla time okay so we need to understand this is the very key parameter to uh, to share the resources or uh, to calculate the resources okay let's say you get some sla time as something like a 10 minutes okay to just process 10 minutes or something like uh, uh, like you will get like uh, not 10 minutes we can go with some lesser number like five minutes or so so with the above config to process the 100 gb of the data right so to process the 100 gb of the data we have uh, calculated like 800 cores and uh, 800 cores and uh, some 400 gigs of memory okay so 400 gigs of memory here each task or each partition 128 mb of the partition 128 mb of partition can process by one core can process by one core one core correct so in this case if let assume let assume if one task uh, will taken by like uh, if one task let assume that one partition one partition is taking approximately like you know minute one partition is taking approximately one minute so that is a very ideal case okay but when it comes to the real case these values will definitely vary but i'm trying to take one uh, example with assumption number i'm trying to make the concept clear here okay so one partition is approximately taking the one minute so in case uh, so since we we have around 800 partitions right so 800 partitions or 800 tasks is going to complete it obviously one minute right so this is ideal case means though we have a sla like five minutes we are trying to complete the job within one minute right so here you what you have to understand is since we have given the more resources to the job uh, our sla come down a bit le uh, too less right if you wanted to make it to some five minutes right so obviously we can uh, we can divide this 800 tasks by five times right like if you divide if you divide 800 tasks by five times it comes obviously 160 okay so 800 by 5 is 160 which means we can still execute we, we can still go with 160 uh, 160 cores okay we can still go with the 160 cores as a, a least course that to process your data in five minutes like 160 cores like at every one minute it is trying to process the 160 uh, 160 tasks so after five minutes this is going to complete uh, after five minutes it is going to run all 800 partitions right so th this is how you can calculate using the dedicated sla okay so here again um, this is on the cal calculated part like still we can see how we can optimize further okay so how we can optimize this further instead increase the partition size increase partition size like here right since this dedicated cluster mostly works in the cloud environment i'll assume the cloud uh, case and i'm giving the solution out here so increase the partition size because mostly the data was available in one particular s3 bucket or some one uh, location right so here there won't be much uh, uh, requirement to move the data here and there as like in hdfs cluster right so since all the data like whatever the data 100 gb will be stored in one bucket so that is quite quite fast uh, quite uh, possible so that's the reason we can increase the partition size from 128 mb to uh, some, we can double it like we can go with the 256 mb so in case of the 256 mb obviously the partitions so the partitions reduce partition count is reduces from 800 to 400 because we double the partition size so now we have only 400 uh, partitions not 800 okay so this is the one thing that you can do uh, to optimize your job the next thing is we need to understand whether it is a memory oriented job memory oriented or cpu oriented or computer oriented oriented okay so i can discuss you more about these points in upcoming video but we'll understand whether it's a memory oriented or computer oriented two types of jobs are available okay so if it is a memory oriented we'll try to assign the more memory to the uh, job and if it is computer oriented we have to throw more cores to the uh, job so we have to increase the partition size from 128 mb to 256 mb or even you can go with the 512 mb too depends on your uh, uh, job and your data size so the partitions with it is to 400 next we need to identify whether it is a memory oriented or computer oriented 
okay so in case of the memory oriented so th this will help you to choose which type of instances that you can choose to execute your job so in aws if it is like memory oriented job you can choose with r uh, type of instances like r5 um, r related family and if it is memory oriented um, sorry that is memory oriented if it is computer oriented you can choose uh, c oriented uh, c family right so this will help you to choose the right type of instances to execute your job in a optimal way okay so if it is memory oriented uh, job or something like that right like uh, you can uh, use something like memory fraction okay so we have to increase the storage memory fraction spark memory fraction dot fraction you can increase to 0 0.8 so what happens easily it will be like 60% uh, of the memory that you can get like 60% of the memory you can get it for uh, execution like you see the unified memory if you wanted to increase this unified memory instead 60 you can go with some 80 so that you'll get more space for uh, to store your uh, data and to process your data okay so with this configuration you can change that one so that uh, it will be used and even uh, if, you, if you require more uh, storage you can also use that storage configuration something like uh, spark storage spark memory dot storage fraction so with this configuration uh, you can say whether how much memory that you wanted to uh, require for uh, your uh, no, while storing out your uh, data in the executor and the next thing is you can uh, you have to change your uh, shuffle partition bytes okay so spark dot sql dot files max partition bytes So this you can keep it approximately 256 MB. Okay, since you have changed your partition, so how you will change this partition by increasing this value instead 120 MB. This value is by default 128 MB. You can increase to 256 MB so that it will consider 256 MB data as one particular uh, block. Okay, so by adding uh, this uh, type of a configuration, you can uh, execute the memory oriented job so that the memory oriented job can execute in a better uh, performance. Okay, so in the same way, next we can see uh, uh, like you know shuffle spark shuffle uh, shuffle spark shuffle compress you can make it as a true so that the shuffle files it will be compressed and the next thing is spark sql compress files or uh, you know spark uh, shuffle file buffer spark shuffle something like file uh, buffer some configuration is there this will uh, actually like 31k or something that it has like uh, by default but you can uh, the 31kb or something you can increase it into some 1 mb or like uh, more value like even the 2 mb this actually controls the buffer size uh, for shuffle file uh, input output operation so if it is a higher number it will actually improve the uh, performance okay so since you have changed the partition you have to change this value for computer oriented uh, job even if you have something like a spark uh, uh, a spark uh, shuffle uh, spill compress option so something like spark shuffle fill fill compress equal to two so that what is the memory that it is uh, spilling uh, no, it's not fill it's spill i'm sorry here yeah, it's spill So whatever the data that it is spilling to the disk, like right, so that will be compressed. So due to the compression, you can get a better uh, performance. Anyhow, we have a more course. So uh, if you have a more course, so by enabling this configuration, uh, this you can improve your job uh, performance. Okay. So by tuning all these uh, configurations, and also you can uh, add like you know uh, piston filters. Like if you are using the if you are using the parquet files, something like Spark SQL parquet filter filter push down some option was there filter push down you can also enable it into true uh, so that by enabling uh, all this option it will employ the filter push down partition so that it will uh, read only the partitions which are required along with that we can also have partition pruning uh, okay so partition pruning related configs also are available so if you use all this configuration uh, this can actually help you to execute your job in a better uh, way so, uh, so the thumb rules is first like you need to uh, choose choose three to uh, four times three to four times of uh, choose the partitions partition count two to four times of your executors four times of course okay so this usually we can call it as a two to four times but still you can you can go like two to even seven times or eight times even uh, depends on your job type if it is memory oriented job you can increase to some uh, two to four instead two to four you can go even with eight okay so two to eight times uh, okay so the next thing is 
we need to keep one core for 4 to 6 GB of the data. 4 to 6 GB of um, executors. Okay, executor size, executor memory. Okay, like if you have like 4 GB or 5 GB that you are giving one core, like if you are giving the uh, 20 GB of the executor, so you can go up to max of five cores. So that is on the medium case. But if it is memory oriented, you can still go with one GB with the eight GB or even even 10 GB also you can go if it is memory oriented. If it is compute oriented, this configuration is uh, much better, like four to uh, six GB of the memory. So by by keep this uh, thumb rules in mind, you can try to increase your uh, configurations or we can you know decrease your uh, configurations and uh, give it a try and so that you can get the uh, optimal uh, configuration for any given job okay so after you you find some numbers and you you run the job and once you run the job you try to see whether uh, what, what are the resources what amount of the resources that it is utilizing either by uh, looking at into memory resources or even emr cloud watch logs uh, cloud watch metrics graphs or uh, uh, you can also in the spark ui we have something like a peak in the spark ui spark ui we have something like peak usage okay peak usage metrics are available if you can enable the peak usage metrics you will get to know at a particular point of time what is the peak memory uh, resource that it is utilized in the uh, cluster and peak resources cpu resources so once you find that resources uh, resource utilization based on it you can take a call whether you have to reduce your configuration or you have to increase your configuration so iterate to process so how this is iterative process is we have to run the job understand metrics understand resource metrics and adjust the configs and rerun so till you will get the optimal uh, performance you will try to repeat the same process so that you can end up with final uh, number okay so that's how we can uh, try to uh, come up with the optimal number again you need to choose this uh, runtime should be within our sla okay so since you are running it in the cloud you should also keep it mind on the cost okay so within the sla time you, know, you are achieving the uh, reasonable cost or not okay so if you want some standard uh, numbers you can also get from the google like how far to process the 100 gb of the data how much uh, money that it is uh, that is costing in case of the emr or in case of the data breaks, right so you can get that numbers so based on your numbers you can um, you can compare but don't compare like apple to apple but you can go with like approximation uh, comparison so th that way you can uh, find out the optimal performance of any given job okay i hope this uh, video gives a clarity about like what are all the things that have uh, played uh, you know uh, played uh, what are the factors that played a key role uh, choosing the or uh, deciding the optimal performance for any spark job okay okay if you like the content please uh, like the video and comment on the video if you have any doubts or if, if i missed out any points so please uh, add it in the comment section